Hello everyone and welcome back. That intro was courtesy of Gonna Go For It, linked to his channel in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to him and if you're on Twitter, follow him because he's great. He also makes great videos. A while back I made a video titled Observational and Historical Science, wherein I discussed the creationist concept of, clearly, observational versus historical science. Since that video was made, I've had more thoughts on the topic and I want to make some clarifications. So let's jump right in. First, I want to point out that in the original video I said that scientists don't use the term historical science. For the most part, this is true. I've still never personally heard a scientist or science educator distinguish between two types of science, and I've still never encountered a science book that did that. It has been pointed out to me, though, that some scientists have used the phrase in the past. A popular quote thrown around by creationists comes from biologist Ernst Mayer in a 2009 Scientific American article titled Darwin's influence on modern thought. For example, Darwin introduced historicity into science. Evolutionary biology, in contrast with physics and chemistry, is a historical science. The evolutionist attempts to explain events and processes that have already taken place. Laws and experiments are inappropriate techniques for the explication of such events and processes. Instead, one constructs a historical narrative consisting of a tentative reconstruction of the particular scenario that led to the event one is trying to explain. Despite Mayer's great intelligence, he's wrong on several counts. Number one, Darwin didn't introduce historicity into science. Charles Lyell and other Christian geologists did that at least 29 years before Darwin wrote Origin of Species. For reference, see Lyell's Principles of Geology. Number two, Evolutionary biology helps biologists in many ways understand the biodiversity and genetics of modern organisms, can help pathologists determine the origin of some diseases like AIDS, and has greatly aided forensic science by radically changing our understanding of pathology, entomology, toxicology, and anthropology. Number three, both physics and chemistry have also altered our views of the past. It's through these subjects that we understand how Earth and our solar system originated, how elements are manufactured in stars, and even how our universe originated. Number four, this isn't so much of a problem as it is a point I want to make clear. All scientific models and explanations are tentative because they are open to later revision as new evidence enters. That's why science works and creationism doesn't. Lastly, in this vein, the article says, quote, No educated person any longer questions the validity of the so-called theory of evolution, which we now know to be a simple fact. Likewise, most of Darwin's particular theses have been fully confirmed, such as that of common descent, the gradualism of evolution, and his explanatory theory of natural selection. Close quote. Creationists have to, of course, avoid inconveniences like this to push their narratives. So, this is the point I want to clarify. While scientists may have used the phrase in the past, it is not, as far as I've seen, actively employed in modern scientific research. There are, however, some scientific papers that do use the phrase and will now turn to these. Using Google Scholar, the most recent papers that employ the phrase are at least a decade old, and the people writing them are mostly philosophers of science. The first paper that pops up when typing historical science in is the 1994 paper Decadal Scale Regime Shifts in the Large Marine Ecosystems of the Northeast Pacific, a Case for Historical Science. And the first line of it is, quote, There are two fundamental ways of doing science the experimental predictive, and the historical descriptive." Close quote. Before we get into why this is partially wrong, I want to compare this with the creationist definition of historical science. According to the Answers in Genesis article, What is Science? Quote, historical origins science involves interpreting evidence from the past and includes the models of evolution and special creation. Close quote. Creationists use the phrase to shrug off any and all evidence for evolution, abiogenesis, or physical cosmology, and Ken Ham even goes so far as to shout, Were you there? This is a paraphrase of Job 38.4 that says, quote, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Close quote. Creationists want to shut down any talks about evolution with the phrase saying that we all start with assumptions about the past, and yet they want to push their own narratives without batting an eye. To be sure, scientists must make assumptions about the past, and those assumptions are held only until evidence shows them to be wrong. 
That's not what you'd hear from creationists, though, since their narrative is built on the Bible always being totally correct. Assumptions about the past include, for example, that nature is fairly orderly. I'm not getting into why nature is orderly here, though. This is often presented as the phrase, the present is the key to the past. For example, the universe is expanding at a constant rate. Nuclear decay occurs at the same rate today that it always has. There's no reason to think otherwise. And mutation rates are fairly constant. When exceptions are discovered, they always help scientists learn more about a particular subject. For example, studies of molecular slowdown in primates help biologists understand why stem primates occur in the late Paleocene rather than the late Cretaceous. And, when multiple dating methods give the same result for the same sample, scientists can reasonably infer that the date is correct. Now, let's get to why the quote from the 1994 paper is wrong. Is the study of the past necessarily solely descriptive? No. In fact, many predictions regarding the past have been and are confirmed. Let's look at a few. The first is Tiktaalik. This fish possesses characteristics of both fish and tetrapods as well as some characteristics intermediate of both, and it was predicted by Neil Shubin and his colleagues. They looked at the fossils covering the fish to tetrapod transition that had already been found and then looked for rock strata that was about the age they expected for a fossil like Tiktaalik to be in. They made the prediction that a fish tetrapod transition should be found in a certain geologic area. Starting in 1999, Shubin and his colleagues searched Devonian strata on Ellesmere Island, Canada, and in 2004 they found Tiktaalik, confirming their prediction. Another predicted fossil is Diarthrognathus. Paleontologist Robert Broom predicted that a mammal-like reptile should have a double-jointed jaw with both reptilian and mammalian characteristics. Then in 1932, Diarthrognathus was discovered, confirming the prediction. Microraptor was even predicted back in 1915 by William Beebe, who said that bird evolution should have gone through a stage where they had wings on their front and back limbs, even though Microraptor wasn't discovered until 2003. Beebe, however, called it the Tetrapteryx. We see now that we can make predictions about the past, and that it's not just a descriptive science. We also know that creationists want to have their cake and eat it too. They accept modern science, including medical and technological advances, but reject all science dealing with the past. That is, unless they want to talk about their own narratives. And we see that the phrase historical science is rarely used in scientific literature outside of philosophy of science. Even if the phrase is to be used in actual science, it must be specifically defined. Simply saying that it's science that deals with the past isn't enough. By that definition, if we don't see an event occurring in the present but can only infer that the event happened after the fact, then that's historical science. What's the difference between determining the cause of death of a person who died several hours ago when no one saw it happen and determining the cause of death of someone who lived in the Neolithic? Both are occurring in the past, after all. If we can use inference to understand something in the present, then we can do it for the past. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.